Soon after the L.A. Jewish Symphony debuted, I had another chance encounter with a young pianist who had just arrived in L.A. We had become fast friends, and before I knew it, he was soloing with the L.A. Jewish Symphony in Gershwin's Concerto in F. In those early days, we performed a lot together. Now, fast forward 20 years, and he's world renowned for his one man stage shows depicting the composers Gershwin, say him with me, Beethoven, Chopin, Leonard Bernstein, Franz Liszt, and soon to be Irving Berlin. I can think of no one who I'd rather share the stage with for my 20th anniversary, anniversary. And I am so incredibly grateful for his generosity. Please help me welcome back to the stage, Mr. Hershey Felder. In the very early days in New York, I was dreaming of going into the Yiddish theater. Why? Because my father, when I was young and studying the piano, he said, that's an absolutely appropriate thing for a young boy who wants to be a rabbi do. Um, <laughs> however, you cannot go into the theater. There are drugs there. There are terrible people there. The only theater I will allow you to go to is the Yiddish theater. Great. All right. So I am allowed to go to the Yiddish theater. I make some training there, which is, by the way, how all the shtick came about and how I learned my craft, by being a child in the Yiddish theater. And you need to know how serious Yiddish theater rehearsals are. They start, no matter what rehearsal you're doing, what play you're doing, how serious the character, they always start with a meal. If you are, <laughs> if you are doing Tevye and whatever and Fiddler on the Oifendach, or if you're doing any one of those things, it's a borscht, and this is 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. No matter what it is you're doing, herring with Schwarzbrot, you can't imagine the way we ate, and then, God forbid, 15 minutes in, someone is starving, so out come the cookies, you know. <laughs> We were so fat. No wonder everybody in those plays is like this. You know, all they do is eat and rehearse all day. But then I got to New York, and I was asked as my first engagement in New York. I was 19 years old to take part in the Yiddish Film Festival, and I was asked to take part in this, this you know, Yiddel mit dem Fiedel. I was asked to play the piano music live, and the music was by Abraham Elstein, and I was absolutely fascinated by this music because it was so classical in nature, yet it was so unbelievably and unerringly Yiddish. And I thought, how am I going to find the original score to this while the movie is playing and I'm supposed to play along? So I went and did some research. You know, in the old days, we actually opened the telephone book. And I, <laughs> and I looked, and you know, this was only like three years ago when I was 20, and you know, um, <laughs> And I looked and I saw the name Elstein, Mrs. Abe Elstein, and I said, this couldn't be. And then I said, on 11th Street, she was two blocks away from I was, where I was in the village. And I picked up the phone and I called her. I said, this is her, she felt, you have no idea who I am. Hell, I don't even know who I am, and I, you know. And, you know, are you Mrs. Elstein as in Abe Elstein's wife? And, and she said, indeed I am. I said, you're kidding, why did you answer your phone? <laughs> She said, because it rang, dear, because... <laughs> I said, listen, and I told her my problem. I needed to find the score. And I said, may I come over? She says, you sound like a nice boy. And at this point, she was in her late 80s, almost 90. And she was a famous playwright. She had written a play called The Four Seasons that had played on Broadway for a number of years. She wrote for everybody. But there she was alone. And her husband had passed away a number of years before. So I went to visit her. I baked cookies, which is by the way, you grow up in the Yiddish theater. You don't go anywhere without bringing food, you know? <laughs> I went, we sat together. And the most bizarre thing happened, and this is our first meeting. We sat together, and she faced me. She was 90 at the time, and I was 23. She, uh, 22. I, she was looking at me, and she, out of the blue, she says, when's your birthday? And I said, well, it's July 9th, but so, you know, I mean, yeah, I hope you're not one of those with the cancer and this. She says, really, that's remarkable. And I said, I suppose I was born. And she <laughs> went to the back room in her apartment. She comes back with a passport. And she says, I want you to look at this. This is the composer Abraham Elstein's passport. And Abraham had contributed so much great music to the Yiddish theater. And I looked at it, and it said, July 9th. She said, I don't know how I knew this, and I don't know why I'm supposed to know this, but we are supposed to be friends. And she entrusted me with her husband's music, the entire collection. And I only found this out after she passed. I got a call from her attorney. She says, you are the heir to the entire of Abraham Elstein's music, which I have in my possession. And she said, 
she had said in the thing, in the, in the document, she said, I trust one day you will know what to do with it. And this is one of his most famous songs. Abyssalsen, Abyssalregen, ach, ruhig auch dem Kopf zu legen, ab wie gesinnt, kennen glücklich sein. A schuch, a sock, a kleid und lattis, in Kessene, a drei, vier Slottis, a wie gesinnt, kennen glücklich sein. Die Luft ist frei, war jeden frei. Sonne scheint vor jedem in dem Ohm und der Ruhe. A bisschen Fred, a bisschen Laden, a Mund mit Freien, a Schnäpsen machen, a wie gesinnt, hellen Glückler sein. Eine Sucht passiert es, eine Sucht gewährt es, eine wenn die ganze Welt, eine Mäht, das ganze Glück, hängen wir ab in Geld. Sollen alle suchen, sollen alle kriegen, nur die Tracht bei mir. Ich darf das so im Kapur ist, weil das Glück steht bei mein Tier. A bisschen tun. A The sun shines for all of us, rich or poor, evenly. A bissel freed, a bissel lachen, a mull mit freind, a schnäpsen machen. Well, have you seen Captain Glicklerwein? Have you seen?